Thank you, my friends, for being here today. It's not a something that we get an opportunity to do very often. I'm glad our friends are here, and I appreciate their effort to give all to sing for the Lord. You can take the Word of God and go to 1 John chapter 2 this morning. 1 John chapter 2. Now, the Bible does say, we try to quote it often here. We've been taught this through the years. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. We ought not be an 80% blesser. Amen. Let's get all in, 100%. As my dad would say, maybe 128%. He was always trying to get me to find 128%. Never quite attained to that, but, but at least it was a good goal. Amen. And these gentlemen sing from their heart. I appreciate that. May the Lord be praised. We give our attention now to the Word of God. Without this foundation, we'd have nothing to sing over. Without this foundation, we would have no reason to gather. And this morning, I want us to look here at 1 John chapter 2. We'll begin our reading in verse 18. Last week, we took the admonition to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. All that's passing away anyway, right? There's no sense to get so heavily invested in the world and the world system because it's all going to burn up. God has something much better for us. And we're reminded this as well as we realize that the world is going to pass away. In verse 18, says here, John says here, little children, it is the last time. It's a powerful phrase there. It is the last time. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many antichrists, whereby we know that it, it, it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But you have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. We'll stop our reading there. I want to notice those phrases that we find in verse 18 at the beginning and the end. It is the last time. It is the last time. The last time that John writes about is not really just, uh, not necessarily the idea that everything's over in John's day. It's been some 2,000 years since that time. He, he lived nearly to the end of that very first century. It's the oldest and longest living of the apostles that walk, walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. But he's referring actually to a time that covers the time between the first and second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Really, the last time begins with Jesus Christ's resurrection and it continues until the time Jesus returns in the air. I'm looking forward to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to come in the air. Yes, those in, the dead in Christ are going to rise first, and we which are alive and remain, if we know the Lord, are going to be caught up together with them in the clouds, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. I'm looking forward to the Lord's return. The next thing on the Lord's calendar of eschatology of end time events is the return of the Lord Jesus Christ in the air. It's called the rapture, the catching up of God's church. Jesus is coming, and when he takes us to be with him, this much will be unleashed on this world, that period of tribulation. The revelation of someone called the, the true Antichrist with a capital A will be revealed after all of that. And he'll have his way in the world. But I want you to know, just because the Antichrist is not being revealed in this age, and this age of grace, this church age that we're in, I want you to know we're being, pre we're being prepared for his arrival. And John reminds his friends that there are many Antichrists here. He's, uh, you know, I remind you, as John writes here, he says it's the last time. He's saying we're in the last days. Those days began with the coming of, of the Lord Jesus Christ as a baby and rising from the grave. And this time since we're in the last, it's the period of time. It doesn't necessarily refer to the length of it, but this is the fourth quarter that we're in, my friend. We don't know how long this fourth quarter lasts, but it's the last time. And as we look back and read God's word together, we know that much of the Old Testament points to a time when Jesus would come as a lamb who would take away the sins of the world. And people waited, and, and God's chosen people waited and longed for the coming Messiah. Many rejected because they not fit their description and their hopes for what Jesus Christ would be. But he came, and he did exactly what he said he was going to do. He was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He went to the old rugged cross and died for my sins and your sins vicariously, paid our atonement, went into a borrowed tomb, and rose again the third day. Thank God, victory over all that besets us for eternity. 
That's how our Lord and his people lived in the age of the Old Testament. They looked forward to all that. When Jesus Christ then died and rose again, he ushered in now a new waiting period that we are in. In this last time, we're waiting for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. He won't come as a lamb, but he'll come as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Thank God he will re we'll return in the air. We'll be with him. Then one day he's going to come and step foot on this earth at the end of that tribulation period. And he's going to set it in order. It's going to take a little work, but he's going to get it done. Looking forward to it. His last days began in John's day after the resurrection and the, it's been a growing intensity ever since. And don't you sense the intensity picking up even now, my friend? More intensity all along the way. Jesus would describe this much like a woman who's expecting a baby, a waiting time, a time of preparation, closer to the time of delivery. It's a time of anticipation and expectation. Then comes the labor and panic sets in, right? But then a wonderful gift comes to pass. Jesus described the time of his second coming being just like a woman who's expecting it. In John's day, it was like the woman who just found out she was expecting. And today, I believe we sense the labor pains and we fact the fact that Jesus Christ can come in any day, any moment. These labor pains are getting more frequent and more intense. Matthew chapter 24, I'm referring to some of this. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke and he said in verse 37, but as in the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. My friend, I hope you're ready. In this day of abnormal sexual immorality, of increased violence, of the increasing of the imaginations, of the thoughts of evilness in men and women continually, we better be ready for the Lord to return. It's coming. Paul warns us about the last days. Look with me, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Familiar thoughts as we think about the age that we live in and what Jesus is getting ready to do. 2 Timothy chapter 3, Paul writes to his son in the faith, Timothy, and he's telling them, as you pastor, as you lead, as you encourage others, I want you to know this is what's happening. This know also in the last days perilous times shall come. What are perilous times like? It's not just times when you and I feel like we're in danger. These are the characteristics of perilous times. We, we tend to think about ourselves, but the Lord has a, has a bigger plan than just me. I'm glad I'm a part of it. But look what he's saying. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. As we read that laundry list of, of things that we, we know give an indication of the perilous times, you and I may be shocked to understand that maybe what Christ would count as the most ungodly thing is having a form of godliness. You and I would say, oh, but think about this, covetous boasters, proud blasphemers. And we parents would say, yeah, disobedient to parents. Look at that, look at that. Unthankful, unholy, all these things we'd say. But God says, as, he, as this list continues to build, I believe in its intensity, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. God forbid that would be the testimony of my life testimony of this church it's as easy as my dad would say it's easy to play church I still remember being with my dad some of my earliest memories I told you when recently with being with my dad on bus routes when I was a little boy little boy picking up children to come to church early on Sunday mornings I can still remember riding through down through Spartanburg South Carolina the church that we were in there and we'd ride down as a certain textile plant you don't see many of them anymore they had plenty of a lot of empty buildings like that down that's where my grandparents worked in those buildings. But I remember riding by there on a Sunday, a few Sunday mornings at a certain time of the year, they'd have a little church set up out there. And they, they would have a little, a little group of people outside that church building. And they would be, it was just all, all set up all the scene, but it always caught my attention. I can remember to this day. I remember going to Grandma Chapman's house. I can remember standing, going out on the front porch. She had a big, beautiful front yard that kind of sloped up, just like the church floor slopes up in some nice buildings, you know. I'd stand on that front porch behind a big old rose bush. My Grandpa Chapman had... Had, had, had planted, big, big old thing, had lots of thorns in it, by the way, be careful. And I would stand there and sing and preach like we were having a church and imagine all of that. But it's not time to play church. It's not time to just, 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 just make it look like we're following God. It's time to be a true follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, not denying the power thereof. 
The writer of Hebrews refers to this period of the last days in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse, and verse 2. He says, God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. That's how he spoke. Back in these last days, spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom he made the worlds. In this passage, John is speaking to us of the last times and he's talking to children. He's talking to children. If you'll notice back there with me, he says, he says these words here at the beginning of our reading. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 18, he says, little children. Who's he speaking to here? He's speaking to people who are vulnerable in the faith. People are vulnerable in the faith. It doesn't mean that people are necessarily new in the faith, but they're vulnerable in the faith. Maybe we would associate them being new to the family of God with being vulnerable. That's certainly possible. But it's sad to say some people have been in the family for years remain in that vulnerable state. Not that our salvation could be rejected or revoked, we're susceptible to the wiles of the devil and what he uses other people to tempt us with. The spirit of Antichrist. The spirit of Antichrist. He writes here to little children implying that they were vulnerable. They need to be on guard against unprincipled people and teachers who are trying to deceive them. I've shared this with you before. There was a young boy who was playing with his grandma at his grandma's house near a large grandfather clock and noontime was approaching. He enjoyed it. With both hands, uh, the old timepiece uh, reached 12. You know that sound came, that, that sound 12 times. It's noon time. Ding, 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 ding. And he just had a great time enjoying that at Grandma's house. As he always liked to do, the boy counted each gong as it sounded. And this time, however, something went wrong with the clock's mechanism inside. Instead of stopping at 12, it kept right on chiming. Number 13, <laughs> number 14, number 15. Number 16, he couldn't believe his ears. He jumped to his feet. He ran to the kitchen where Grandma was at. Grandma, Grandma, it's later than it's ever been before. It's later than it's ever been before. Express the truth. We all need to consider, yes, it is later, but we ought not be deceived. It is later, but God help us not to be deceived by the spirit of Antichrist. It's, it's, running, it's running afoul in this world. God help us. Even as John here is a wise spiritual father giving counsel, help us to consider what God says here. I want you to notice with me, really, the time we have this morning, there's lots to say about the Antichrist. There's lots to say about the anointed ones. That God willing, we'll be able to cover the Antichrist in this hour. Notice with me, first of all, the Antichrist. There are many places in the Scripture which refer to the person that we call the Antichrist. Yes, there will be a person uh, that will take that take that power in this world that will substitute themselves in the place of God and they'll do it as a great benefactor to this world. This world is being shaped for a leader. You know, I, I will say this anecdotally, I think in my own life, I remember growing up and thinking, you know, people are independent. People want to make their own way in this world. I'm getting further from the truth. The older I get, people want to stake their claim and make their mark. And what I find, excuse me, I don't mean to be rude, but let's just say what, what I'm thinking this morning as I'm yielding to the Spirit of God. People are sheep. And they're following. Now, we have to be careful in our own regard as believers in God. Sometimes we, we just want to hitch our wagons, excuse me, to some preacher. We want to hitch our wagons to some political figure. And there's, there's no, no that's, just, that's not right either. We're sheep. Now, we ought to be led by the Spirit of God and let God... Yeah, we've got to have us yield and all that do what's right and stand up for what's right. And I believe we ought to get behind people that are doing the right things. Don't get me wrong, but we ought not worship political figures. We ought not worship preachers. Let me say it again. We ought not worship political figures. We ought not worship preachers. It doesn't mean we can't support them. Wholeheartedly support them. We must keep things in the right endeavor. But as I look at this world and what people we would deem to be lost in this world without God in this world, I want you to know they're not a bunch of independent thinkers in this world. All they've done is traded one philosophy. They disdain for another philosophy that they can, they can maintain. That's what they've done. And they're sheep. And they're, what, they're following the Pied Piper on the broad path to hell. Excuse me. This world is being conditioned to get behind the Pied Piper and drop off into hell. It's everywhere. Listen, we need to pray for our young people. They need to be independent thinkers. If they will love the truth, God will speak to their heart. I don't want them to be a sheep following blindly the, the thought and philosophy of this world. They'll listen to what's being touted in the, in the media, what the, what's being touted all over the place. It's woven in to the very entertainment of this world. They will be seduced by the spirit of Antichrist. This church, this church, we are a church, but we're a school. We're to teach the doctrine. 
The doctrine of Christ taught in a young person's life mixed with the power of the Spirit of God will lead them in a path of righteousness. I believe with all my heart. Train up a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, they'll not depart from it. Listen, Antichrist is coming in this road in Revelation 13. He's the beast. And 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, he's a man of lawlessness. Of lawlessness. And Daniel chapter 9, he's a prince who is to come. And Daniel 7, the little horn. John tells us here, yes, we understand there is an Antichrist to come. But I want you to know, one of the signs of the last time is there are many Antichrists in the world. Those that are against God. Everywhere. Antichrist are those who claim to have God's power and authority, but they don't. Those are those who reject and oppose him and his teachings. That's what we see in this world. As we look at the last time, it's the spirit of Antichrist. It wasn't long even after the Lord Jesus Christ left this earth as he ascended from the Mount of Olives that people started offering substitutes instead of Jesus Christ himself. Jesus warned about it. I referred to Matthew 24 a moment ago. He said in verse 24 of that same chapter, Matthew 24, he says this, Jesus himself says, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. I'm glad that's not possible. But Jesus is telling us it's going to be great influence even over God's people if we're not careful. The spirit of Antichrist. God give us a discerning spirit. We'll talk about that more, God willing. John said there were already many antichrists who had appeared in this day. They were there at the end of the first century, just a few decades or less after the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so much the more as we deal with things today. There in that day, John felt a need to help protect believers from heresy and show them examples of counterfeit Christians and counterfeit teachers. God help us to have an awareness of all of that. I want you to know just because, excuse me, I don't mean to be rude. And I don't have to tell you everything. I could, I could name a few names. God, if God gives me liberty, I will. But just because somebody gets on the television or they have a podcast or because they may carry a Bible doesn't mean that they're standing true to God's word. And I'm not trying to be negative. I'm glad for anybody trying to get God's work. And anybody's trying to win people to the Lord, anybody's trying to do a work for God, they might not be exactly like me, but if I can find some agreement in the gospel, I want to be encouraging. I'm not looking for what's wrong with everybody. Let's just swear what I say. I've come through that period of time. But I am, I am still in the corner of those who want to stand up for truth. But I'm not going to get my binoculars out and try to find something wrong with you and find something wrong with the church down the road. Let somebody else do that. we got too much to do for Jesus. I want you to know this, this. This passage tells us if something is wrong, it'll make itself abundantly clear. It will. If you've been in God's church any time at all, you know that's true. That'll, it'll make itself abundantly clear. You and I don't have to be the Christian FBI. But truth be told, we, many of us have taken up that mantle. And I want you to know that's the world system. What we're doing is forsaking what John wrote pre previously to love not the world. That's the world system. That's the system of the world. Love not the world. Don't try to one-up somebody. Don't try, to, don't try to necessarily be the one that reveals that. Let God do his work. And in due time, God's spirit and the spirit of Antichrist in a person's heart will reveal all that needs to be seen. God help us. These antichrists in John's day reveal themselves, no doubt about it, as I'm just re re referring to you here, and I want you to look with me in verse 19. There's a revelation of the spirit of antichrist. He says this, first of all, in verse 19, they went out from us, but they were not of us. Number one, I want you to see this spirit of antichrist is revealed in people who are deserters. They leave. They leave. Now, I'm not talking about everybody that just leaves a church. A church like this, we've been here over 30 years. If we had everybody that's ever come to this church still in this building, we couldn't build a bit of building big enough to hold them all. I mean, we are a Baptist church. We should put a revolving door in here probably at some point. But we, uh, we don't want people leaving. But you understand how it works. You understand how it works. You know, I, grew, I, was, in, I was in Knoxville for many years. I enjoyed my time there so much. Where the chair was referring to that this morning. I had a great, great time there. But, you know, in that in Knoxville, which is a, a, a city of less than half a million people, the greater Knoxville area, the bigger but less than half a million people, there were over 400 Baptist churches. I don't think that was a result of church planting. I don't think that's what happened. It had more to do with the color of the carpet and all those kind of things probably, right? Those kind of ridiculous things. But just because someone leaves a church doesn't mean that they have the spirit of Antichrist. But I've seen people leave a church like this and yoke up with places that are completely heretical. And they went out from us, but they were never of us. Hear me now. They went out from us. They were never of us. Just because someone leaves a church doesn't mean that they're necessarily in the spirit of Antichrist. By the way, you ought to be careful when you leave a church. Don't do over frivolous things. 
It's true of you and the Lord. I know God works and moves. We better know we're in God's will. You better know you're in God's will. And I would be, I would be very, I would pay close attention to things like doctrine. Doctrine divides. Be careful about your preferences that you elevate to the level of God's commands. We already talked about that in last Wednesday night. God gives clear commands in his word, right? From that, we derive principles that we that are taught and we can apply across the board. From there, we develop personal convictions in our life. And from there, we develop personal standards. With those standards, we ought to trace them back to God's commands. And be careful, we don't elevate that standard to a command. Don't elevate uh, my conviction to a command. There's so much to be said there. I'm developing some thoughts. I want to preach on it very soon. But they went out from us, but they were not of us. They're deserters. The spirit of Antichrist is revealed in deserters. They're not in sympathy with us. The aim is not our aim. Their, their thoughts are not our thoughts. Their principles are not our principles. And yes, this was happening in the early church. They'd gone through the carnage and the damage already of false teachers who had left churches to form new groups. And undoubtedly, they took people with them. And whenever that happens, there are people left behind who are confused and wondering, Why, what's going on? Why did our friends leave? They claim to have found the truth now, and they, they think that we're in the dark. Maybe there are problems here. Maybe we should leave too. <laughs> it's an unsettledness. It's not easy. Again, I'm not talking about leaving because God, because God is, there's, a, there's a problem that has been tried to be dealt with according to Matthew chapter 18. There's Bible for our problem. And doctrinal issues that cannot be resolved. I'm talking about people that are deserters and they're deserting because they are forsaking the truth. Sooner or later, one commentator wrote, things out of harmony or persons out of harmony will be sure to separate. You know, if we will lift up Jesus and the truth of God, those who are not interested in that will find a hard time being a part of this assembly. But if we make this assembly about something that's very palatable, anybody, even someone without Christ, anybody will. Now, I'm not against anybody fitting in here. I want them all to fit in here. I wish, excuse me, if I could say it this morning, I don't, not because of me saying this pulpit, but I wish every person in our county could hear the gospel like it's preached from behind this pulpit. I mean it with all my heart. Because we love the Bible. We love Jesus. And if there's a choice to be made, it's going to be Jesus and the Bible. That's the way we are going. And I want everybody in the county, in our country, in our globe to hear that. I want them to hear that. But I want you to know, but people are out of harmony that will be sure to separate. But someone said members out of, out of harmony, either with the moral tone or with the primary religious truths of the church, cannot long maintain their association with it. If we stand firm in our loyalty to Christ, they will be sure to find themselves uncomfortable. Oh, yeah, I want to be so loyal to Christ that, that he causes the spirit of Antichrist to depart. And one way to notice the spirit of Antichrist in the church and to realize these last days, there's, when, when something is wrong, the Antichrist always departs. It's, a desert, it's long, different than departing. They desert. They leave their work unattended. Caught through caution to the wind. No matter what's happening in the children's ministry, the choir ministry, no matter what's happening in the visitation ministry, no matter what's happening in the cleaning ministry, we're just gone. It's the spirit of Antichrist if we're not careful. We're not careful. God helps not only are the, those, the, those antichrist deserters, number two, they're deceivers. Look here in verse 22. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is the, anti, he is the antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. They're deceivers here. It's just traumatic, you know, when thieves steal your identity and steal your money. I don't know if you've ever gone through that. I went for this past Christmas, had an opportunity to get my wife something at a certain pretty, pretty, well-known place of business, and I got her, uh, I got her, a, I got her a laptop that she needed for her job. I went to a very reputable place. I'm getting ready to tell you the name of. Better stop, yeah, because you may not want to go there. I don't know, but I wasn't long before I showed some other charges started showing up on my card. I said, "Oh my goodness, someone is someone's taking money, hundreds of dollars out of the bank account. It take long for things to go into the negative." Amen. When they were taking it that clip. That was disconcerting, and that there's, but there's something far more tragic is when a spiritual con artist who claims to be Christian deceives those who are unsuspecting. They're out there. The stakes are much higher than someone's life savings. The eternal destiny of souls is at risk, and we know from the very beginning of time that Satan 
has been the great deceiver. And the spirit of Antichrist connected to Satan himself is absolutely embroiled in the spirit of deception. Many of you know that we love and support Pastor Dave Preston and his wife Millie who have been laboring over 20 years out in Mount Pleasant, Utah among Mormons. Many sweet and wonderful people, beautiful families in the most beautiful small towns maybe in America are found in that wonderful place. Everything's right on a grid system. It's just like laying a piece of graph paper over a town. and You can't get lost. You can always find your way around. That would be good for guys that are traveling, I'm sure. Or they hardly need a GPS. It's a beautiful place. Some of us that are old enough to remember would think, boy, it's almost like living in Mayberry. Living in Mayberry, beautiful place, but there's the spirit of deception there. It's a beautiful place, but the truth of the gospel is not there. There, Jesus Christ is not the pure and perfect Son of God. He's the brother of Lucifer, according to that false teaching. There, there, there Jesus Christ is not the way the truth and the life, there are so many other things that must be accomplished in your life in order to gain some sort of eternity. Oh, sure, it's beautiful. It's a place you might like to visit, may yeah, even like to live, raise a family, but I want you to know it's deceptive. What you see is not all there is. I remember as we've gone for a couple of mission trips or I've visited there a couple of times myself, I remember meeting people, talking to people, and I remember especially the very first mission trip we made years and years ago, and we, we went house to house in the, in the town that Dave lives in and Millie lives in. We went house to house in the, the neighboring town and signed up so many people for Bible studies. But I was, I, was, I was shocked as I went to homes and many of them well received. And we would speak of Jesus. We would speak of the Bible. We would talk of church. And our lingo was the same, but we had a completely different meaning. Deception. That's why I'm saying, my friend, we must have, may have we must have the truth of God's word. We'll get to this more later, maybe at another time. It looks like that we must have the truth of God's word, the Spirit of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, to lead and guide us to deal with deceivers. You know what? The, in the last days, Antichrist will come. Antichrist are among us now. They are deserters. They leave. They try to tear up and leave when they go, and they are deceivers. I want you to know just because someone talks a good game doesn't mean they have the spirit of Jesus Christ living in them. We have, must confess that in these last days, in this New Testament age, that Satan himself has planted deceivers even in Christian churches like this, if we're not careful, where they can prey on untaught, the untaught and those even who are disgruntled. You've got to be very careful. You know, we've all been there. Even in our church life, we're not the happiest of people. Right now, I'm exuberant. I was out of church for a while because I was sick. I'm so glad to get back. I can't stand myself. I mean, that, not, nothing's a problem right now. Amen. I mean, the honeymoon will be over again soon. I guess we'll have to get sick and, and work, work this out again. I don't know. I don't, I don't think that's the way to do it. No. But you understand what I'm saying. There, there comes a time when we settle in and, and something doesn't quite float our boat and, and we get a little disgruntled. Then we become prey for deception. Don't ever make major decisions when you're out of sorts. Amen? You've ever heard that before? That's more than just spiritual. It's very practical. But we have to be careful that we're not being deceived. We are much more prone to deception from Satan when we're unhappy with what's going on in our spiritual life. Especially as it relates to other people. Be careful about that. We don't want to live according to this world, the world system. We don't want to live according to the spirit of Antichrist. Deserters, Desert is the spirit of Antichrist. Deceivers, the spirit of Antichrist. Even as I say that, if I, I, can, I can just share what's in my heart. I want us to know, church, that yes, you and I have a responsibility to make the truth known and to call names at times, especially dealing with family and loved ones and close friends and all those sorts of things. But I want you to know the same blessed Holy Spirit that has dealt with you and led you and kept you in the paths of righteousness, so to speak, <laughs> for his name's sake, will do that for anybody. Sometimes you and I won't let people have, how, what can we say? I don't know how to say it the best, but we won't allow people to have their own experience with God. We have to be the Holy Spirit. We have to tell them they're wrong. We have to grab them by the hand and bring them down the road. My friend, let people have their own experience with an almighty God. By the way, that God loves them just as much as he loves you. That God wants a, a, a right end for them just as much as he wants it. My job is to declare the truth. I'm not a debater. I'm a declarer. And God's spirit will do the convincing. So when God puts me in a place where I need 
do more persuading. And I feel a great responsibility in my own home. I feel a great responsibility with people in my church as the pastor. But there's a work that only God can do. And I'd be careful not to get between somebody and Jesus. And allow the time to work out. Now, young people, you help us out. You help us out if you consider yourself a young person. I used to do that, but then I just had a 50th birthday and the good days are over. I shouldn't even brought that up. That's, that was took the breath out of me when I said it. But young people, you want to help us out? You want us to get our nose out your business? Excuse me? Somebody wanted to say amen right there, but they didn't. I know. I am 50, but I still remember amen. You want us to get your nose out? You want us to stop worrying about you and get right with God? Of your own accord, listen to the Spirit of God. God willing. Gray heads aren't telling you anything different than the Spirit of God is. If we are, then you do what God says. But if you want to stop being nosy and worrying about where you're going to end up and what you're going to do, then set your sails to the wind of the Holy Spirit and follow God with all of your hearts. Don't listen to the deceivers. And if you've got somebody in your life that's nosy enough to be concerned about it, at least stop every once in a while and thank God somebody loves you. I know it's aggravating, but thank God say I... It's wearing me out, but I'm glad somebody loves me. But you can get us off your back in a heartbeat. You'll just come out for God. Get us off your back in a heartbeat. I think you ought to have a bigger goal than that, but I hope you will. <laughs> Deserters, the spirit of Antichrist is the spirit of desertion. It's the spirit of deception. It's the spirit of deniers. It's all connected here, but our, our reader in verse uh, 23, Whoso, whosoever denieth the Son... The same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. We've been speaking in the book of 1 John about knowing that we know that we have eternal life. And this is the record that you can know that you have eternal life, chapter 5, verse 11. And we know that. There is a record and we can know we're saved. I want you to know you can know here in a sense it's, it's God's business. It's not necessarily ours to judge. But God makes a clear statement. Anybody who denies the Son is not in the family. Denies the fact that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I mentioned the Jehovah's Witness. I mentioned the Mormons. I love people that I know I love and in those groups. I don't want to seem harsh, but I want you to know anybody that would make something out of Jesus less than being deity, than being the Son of Almighty God, the sinless, pure, perfect Son of God, those people cannot be in the family of God according to His Word. And I do not celebrate that. I don't say, bless God, that means I'm in and they're out, or I'm in the right place and they're in the wrong place. No, no, that's not that's, that's, that's the world system we referred to last week. God help us to have a heart. The greatest lie which can be told to anyone is to deny that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Lying about this robs anyone of a hope of salvation. You can't be saved if you deny that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He himself has made unto us the promise of eternal life. He's the one that God sent to satisfy our sin debt. One commentator said, the worst liars in hell will be those who taught others to deny the deed of Jesus Christ. I want you to know Jesus Christ is not a good teacher. He cannot be simply a good teacher. It's impossible. Because in his teachings, he claimed to be the Son of God. In his teachings, he claimed to deliver eternal life. And he's either who he says he is, the pure and perfect Son of God, or he's the greatest liar that ever lived. There is no in-between. You can't do what the Buddhists would do, or the Muslims may do, and say he was a good teacher. False! Because he promised me an opportunity to live forever in heaven with him and with God. He promised me an opportunity to be with my family who's gone on before, again, to see them again. If, he's, if that's not true, he's the greatest liar that ever lived. Excuse me. He cannot be a good teacher. We cannot deny the fact that he's the son of God. There is no middle ground in the spirit of Antichrist. Yes, deserts, it deceives, but it denies the authenticity of the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other lamb of God who's come to take away the sins of the world. Listen, those are false teachers that can even come in and among us if we're not careful. And listen, they don't come in with a pitchfork wearing a, an Antichrist t-shirt. Right? There, some of them have been pastors. God forbid. That have taught the truth for a while and fallen away. That's a shame, isn't it? But it happens. Some of them have been faithful deacons and Sunday school teachers. That's how the enemy has worked from the earliest of days in the church. Listen, I want to say this to you, excuse me, little children. 
John says little children. If you, if you sense some vulnerability in your life because of the actions of another person who you thought was a believer, I want you to know it's the last days. This is going to happen. Don't let it shake your faith. Don't let it stop you from fulfilling God's will in your life. Don't let it drag you in a direction that God's not planned for you. We ought to be diligent, listen, to preserve the unity of the body of Christ, and not just in this local assembly, but with wonderful brothers and sisters outside of this local assembly. We've got some friends visiting today from some other places. We love that church. We love churches like that. We've been praying for Brother Richard Smith and our friends at Calvary Baptist Church in Norfolk. I love them. But I want you to know, we will not, we will not say, we will not forsake the truth for unity. We can't do that. We can speak the truth in love, as I keep referring to. There's just no room for compromise. And compromise is a nice word for sin. When we compromise the truth, we sin. We can't, we can't move away from the core beliefs of the gospel, the truth of God's word, and accomplish God's will. We're going to have to stand. We can do it lovingly. The spirit of Christ, of Antichrist arises. May God count us faithful. May we realize, as I will get to it in another, another message, I wish I had time to preach it today, but we are the anointed. And we're the ones abiding in Christ. And we have an option from the Holy One that will help us to weather these storms. That will show us the way and will light our path. But I want you to know appeasement is not a strategy of God following people. We must declare the truth and follow the truth at all times. Don't let the spirit of Antichrist shake you. Feel a vulnerability because this has happened or that's happened. This has taken place. This has taken place. I want you to know. We stay on God's side. We'll be exactly where we need to be. During World War II, you may have heard of Neville Chamberlain. Just help Daniel study for his history final exam. I remember asking him this question. I think he got it right. I hope he did anyway. He did it in my review. I don't know if he did it on the test. But Neville Chamberlain, he was the Prime Minister of Britain, and he served at the same time as a man called Adolf Hitler was leading Germany. Adolf Hitler was an aggressive. He came aggressively came to power in Germany, even though he came through the democratic process. It's pretty interesting how he dominated. But then he became a very aggressive as the leader. Next thing you know, in 1939, Poland's taken over, and France is under threat, and all these things are happening. And Neville Chamberlain, being the leader of really the great democracy in the world at that time, and it really with, with, with great influence, decided to take a path of appeasement, trying to give Adolf Hitler something he wanted, so he wouldn't take everything. Well, excuse me, friend, he wants it all. He wants it all. He wants it for himself, just like the devil does. He wants to destroy it all. Hitler wanted it all. Neville Chamberlain sought to appease, and he came back. He went to see Hitler himself, and he came back with an agreement and got off the plane there in, in London and, and proclaimed that he had a document signed that we would achieve peace in our time. Peace in our time, just before World War II broke out. Peace in our time. I, I don't know Neville Chamberlain. I wouldn't be overly rude, even though I don't know him, but it was foolish. He thought he could appease someone with an insatiable appetite for destruction. And you and I cannot, we cannot appease the spirit of Antichrist in this world. Those deserters and th those that would deceive and those who would deny Jesus Christ. May we be counted with this not to appease. Uh, someone came to power after Mr. Chamberlain, a man named Winston Churchill, you may be familiar with. He observed this, an appeaser is one who feeds a crocodile hoping it will eat him last. Sure enough, Hitler tried to eat, tried to eat Britain too, didn't he? Yeah, probably a lot. Some of y'all need to study your history books. People in my category are shaking their heads, and some other people are like, who, who are you talking about? History does repeat itself. That is a true statement. We're on the verge of some of that today. As it refers to God's church, we compromise the truth and to appease heresy or to appease a heretic in a church, it will lead to our spiritual. And our, our work is not to hate a person even if they're wrong, if they're doctrinally incorrect. Our person is to, guard, is, is to stand up for the truth. I was going to say guard the truth, but the truth pretty well guards itself. We ought to stand up for the truth. We ought to make sure that those under our influence are not deceived. We ought to be discerning of sound doctrine. That's why you ought to be in church hearing the preaching and teaching of the Word of God, line upon line, precept upon precept. It will be, be ammunition in your arsenal as you fight Satan 
and, and you live for God on a daily basis. You ought to study this Bible regularly. It'll be ammunition in your arsenal as you live for God daily and fight what Satan's trying to do. We ought to study the Bible. We ought to study theology, study a little bit of church history. It won't hurt anybody. Now the school year's wrapping up. So forgive me, young people. I apologize. But maybe you could do that. Many of the errors we still deal with are not new. I want you to know these are the last times. Don't let it shake. Our future is certain. This assures that we were already with Jesus. And the glories of heaven. It assures our feet were already under the banquet table at the marriage, supper, and the lamb. This assures we were already busy with mom and daddy on the streets of God. We have a certain future. In these last days, we don't know how long they will be. Jesus come at any moment. We'll be glad for that. That won't short circuit any of your plans. It'll only fulfill them in the grandest way. I want you to know. When John said it was the last time 2,000 years ago. This is the period of time we're in. We don't know how long we have. Let's, let's be aware of what's going on. Let's not let our faith be shaken. Let's continue to look to the Lamb of God, soon to be the Lion of Judah, who will return and will set this world right. I don't know about you. I want to be on his team. Amen. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, thank you for these truths. People listening to the preaching of the word of God. Help, help us, Lord. Forgive us for falling short. Being distracted by the activity of the spirit of Antichrist in this world. Lord, I, I believe that the world system is, is coming together to promote the spirit of Antichrist. There's no doubt about it. Help us not to fear. Help us not to be shaken. Help us remember what you have promised. And what you will do for your children. Lord, help us to believe in you and realize there's no trouble too great for you. Nothing so earth-shaking that, Lord, we, we, we will be blown away with it. Realize that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. pray you'll steady us and help us to live in your strength as we battle the spirit of Antichrist in this world. We pray it in Jesus' name. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. We'll have an opportunity to... Respond to this truth. This morning, I want you to know Jesus is coming, and if you're not in the family, you're not going to heaven. I say that directly. I don't, I don't say it callously. I want you to know you must, by faith, accept Christ as your Savior, repent of your sin. When you do, you'll be welcomed into the family of God with life eternal. It's more to that life eternal than the length of it. It's a quality. This is life eternal that you may know. know him. That's what it means. You'll know Jesus. Do you know him today? If he was to return today, would you be caught up with him or would you be left behind? Would you? Begin to play this hymn of invitation. I want you to know today is the day of your salvation. Don't put off another moment. These are the last times. Now, Christians, we don't know how long they are. We want to be faithful and don't get blown about with every wind of doctrine. Don't let the behavior even of other Christians disable us. Keep our eyes on Jesus, right? If you're like me, I, I have a tendency to take my eyes off the Lord. I love people. I admire people. I think a lot of people. People fail us, don't they? Don't you know Jesus will never fail? Keep following Him. We'll, we'll be doing what we need to be doing. Let's stand together as we begin this hymn of invitation. It's 305 in the hymn book. You're coming. Come on. Come to this altar. It's wide open. You can see